Hi, I'm Jenny K. Parks. This is Fawns and Porter's Charlotte Block of the Month featuring the lovely Northcott fabrics. So today we're gonna talk about cutting, cutting squares, cutting plain squares. We're just gonna kind of give an overview of cutting before we get too much into this. A lot of people, and I know students who come to me, they're kind of self-taught and they have some ideas about how to cut it, but, but they're still having some issues. So I'm gonna go over some basic cutting fundamentals for you. And then a lot of the fabric that you're gonna encounter with this block of the month is directional. Now again, I covered this in the first one, you don't necessarily have to follow those directions and you don't have to make sure that every single piece is going that way. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. Like when we get to flying geese, that's really hard to, <laughs> to control any direction there. But I'm gonna show you different options and different ways that you can work with it. So let's cover some cutting basics. You're gonna have to deal with a 10 and a half inch square. All right, and I like to say you, you, you know, you want to double check your measurements always off of the pattern. I'm constantly going back and forth to double check. Or you could say you measure once and then you go get new fabric because <laughs> you may have made a mistake. Here's a basic plain square that we're going to make. This one will come later on. And this is the directional one that you're going to need to deal with. And I'll get that in a minute. But I'm going to cover some basic cutting fundamentals here. All right. So you have your fabric that's come, you either pick it up at the store, you got it out of your box or whatever. You have your fabric and what we need to consider is the grain line. Fabric is made with a grain line so it's woven together. You see, it's kind of like this grid right here. You can see you've got these fabrics going in these different directions and they go together. That's how they intermesh. Now, what happens in the manufacturing process, it's not a nice and polite process. It can be pretty violent and can really take your fabric out of grain. It may have been made in grain, but then the printing and the wrapping it on the bolt and all that business, it can be fairly skewed. You know, you get that fabric and it can tell it's just, it's just off. The whole thing is off, it's not working for you. So I'm gonna show you how to find the grain line on any fabric. Now, when I buy from a shop that well, I'm gonna show you how to rip it. When I buy from a shop that doesn't rip it, I will ask for maybe an eighth of a yard extra so I can rip it and so that I know that it's straight. Now, what does cutting on the grain line get you? This is important to think about too, is that as we're making triangles and all these things, everything goes a little better if you're in control of where the bias is. The grain line is up and down. The bias is crisscross and it has a lot of stretch to it. We don't want to have to deal with that stretch. We want to control where it is. So there will be times we come across it and I'll, it'll be red alert, whoop, whoop, bias. And, and we can adjust for that and I'll show you ways to deal with it. But we want to be in control of where it is as much as possible. All right, so here we are. I'm going to take this, this fabric here, it's just cut. And I'm going to take a snip in the fold about an inch in and about an inch down, maybe an inch and a half in and an inch down just enough for me to be able to grab it. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna rip. You ready? It's okay, it's gonna be fine. And I rip it all the way down to the salvage edge. Look at that. These threads that are on here are telltale signs that we have got it on the grain line. The grain line means it's gonna be nice and straight. Now, as I'm dealing with the grain line, this is my standard. I don't care what the salvage is doing, I don't care what the other side is doing, and I don't care what the fold is doing. This is what's important to me. So I'm gonna trim off those scraggly edges. Sometimes I will, um, I'll press it out, but I, I like to trim the fuzzies. So I want you to notice here, I've taken this line, and it doesn't have to be any particular line, but I've just chosen a line. I'm gonna line up my ruler along this line, and that's gonna be the part that I've trimmed off. I'm still keeping a straight edge because that's important, right? Still keeping a straight edge. Now, when you're cutting, a couple things I want you to think about. One is safety. Remember, this is a rolling razor blade, your rotary cutter is. Don't leave it unlocked. Don't leave it in a place where people could step on it or the cat could knock it off or something like that. Don't cut in some crazy direction like this or, or at some kind of funny angle with the possibility of slipping, you don't wanna do that. Treat this with respect. It gradually becomes an extension of your hand. And 
you know, once you get to that point, you still have to remember to treat it with respect and lock it when you set it down and be really careful with it. All right, so I'm gonna position myself. I'm right here. I'm ergonomically correct. I'm right here and I'm not trying to cut at this angle with my body over here or trying to cut at this angle with my body over there. Mm -mm. So I'm, I'm lined up, I'm centered, I'm ready to go there. Now I have my hand on here and I'm pressing down. You notice my hand, it's kind of like a spider, a spider. And it's a nice spider though. <laughs> Aren't you glad spiders can't fly? I just saw it the other day, I thought, yes I am. Um, so I have it spread out here like a spider and I'm holding this down and securely. I don't want it like this because then I can't move as I need to to get to the top. I also don't want to do this because this is much more unsteady. I'm not going to get the leverage that I want to, to really hunker down and cut that off. So I'm going to be up here with my hand right here. Okay, I got my cutter. Now I am ready to go. When I'm doing this, you see I'm going to roll up about halfway and then I'm going to stop and move my hand up to the top. I'm also watching the measurement on the very far end. And if it slips throughout the process, I can go, I can fix that just a little bit. So that's where I'm keeping my eye on that, on the end. My eye is on the goal right there. Okay, so here we go. And you just have to do it, oh, I also give my, this is the other trick here. Don't start right on the fabric, but give yourself a little bit of a runway, a running start, you're ready to go. Okay, here we go. I stop about halfway and I'm still keeping all that pressure on my hand. I'm walking up it up and I'm watching what's happening at the top. And look at that. Beautiful. I also cut with the fold towards me because I know if you've cut like two strips, one of them might be wavy. <laughs> you get kind of a, a smile instead of a straight strip. So I have found that sometimes that problem happens when it's too far for me to reach. You know, or it's too awkward, so maybe adjusting the cutting surface, getting it higher or lower, something like that will help you with that. But I also have this fold down here towards me, towards my tummy, because if I do get a V in it, if I do get any kind of curve, usually it's going to be, a mistake's going to be at the far end with the salvage edge, and I'm just going to cut that off. So, hey, don't have to worry about that part. All right, so here, since this fabric is non-directional, we would just continue to cut the strips as we needed to and then cut out the blocks. Now we're dealing with directional. So all that stuff about grain line that I shared with you, we're gonna have to ignore it if we're gonna pay attention to the directionals, the direction of our fabric. So here we go. All right. Now I'm gonna line this up here. Now I've cut these strips and I did the best I could to get them on straight of grain, uh, you know, to have these lines to be straight of grain. But it's the design that's the most important part here. So you have to think about that. Okay, I'm going to trade off maybe the exact grain line for the design and image that I want. Okay, so I'm going to take a square up ruler, which these things, mighty handy for this project here. And I'm going to trim off the salvage. So I'm just, I, and I just lined it up there on a mark on my ruler, uh, on my mat. And I want to say something too about mats. Generally, an inch is an inch is an inch, you'd think. But sometimes a mat, because it's printed, may not be as accurate as your ruler. So depend on your ruler for the exact measurements and the mat for the straight lines. You don't want to mix those up. I've only encountered one where it was off, but you just want to be aware of it, right? All this work we're putting into it and such a simple thing that you can fix, that's nice. All right, so my hand's right here and centered. I've got a little runway, straight through. Voila, voila, ha ha. All right, so the squares we have to make are 10 and a half inches. And I'm gonna line up my ruler you see, I've got it lined up here. And the cool thing about a square up ruler is it has this little corner. So you know, aha, it tucks right in there to that corner. Got it. And right along there, I'm gonna put my hand down. 
I'm gonna center myself too. I've gotta to get in the right position, right? And then I'm just gonna cut through and you've got it. So see, we have our piece, our block. It's all directional. It's ready to go and our other one. So there you go, you're off and running. Just practice these things. Just remember each time to practice a little bit more, practice a little bit more. I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of cutting, so you'll be able to practice one of these and I think you're gonna like the results. All right, so our next episode, our next lesson is gonna be covering a square and a square block and I'll show you some good stuff with that too. I'll see you then. Thank you.